Welcome back to the last of the FT's Market Bubble series. By flexing the unlimited far power, central bankers Atlas-like saved the world economy from collapse during the crisis years. But by driving up asset prices, they've raised fears about bubbles across all sorts of markets. The question now is whether they can control the process back to more normal times, or is in fact the biggest bubble, the biggest confidence bubble of all, in central bankers. With me to discuss this is Gilles Merck, who's the chief European economist at Deutsche Bank. Gilles, if we look at our chart showing the expansion of central banks' balance sheets over the crisis years, if those lines were gearing up by investors, you'd definitely be talking about bubbles. Should we be worried about the amount of confidence there is being placed in central bankers' ability to see us safe? Well, central bankers always act as you know, uh, uh, savers of, of last results. So in any case, uh, we trust them because we don't know who to trust uh, uh, apart from, from them. Um, I think that where we are right now is that uh, central banks can normally support, uh, the, support the market in three different ways. They can inject liquidity and hope that some of it will go to the market. They've yeah. done this a lot and this is what we see on this chart. Uh, they can uh, force uh, capital reallocation. They yep. also did this, for instance, the, the Fed. Um, and sending prices higher. Exactly. Buying risk-free assets, yep. forcing people to invest in r risky assets. Yeah. That's Take basically this, yeah. QE. Uh, and third, and maybe more importantly, uh, by, in the end, restarting the economy. And this is what's missing, in a sense. And okay. Let's go through those challenges one by one. The first one is about um, They've sent uh, yields on bonds to sort of really quite historic uh, lows. Our second chart actually shows um, the uh, U.S. Treasury yields, German Bund yields, German Bund yield, 10 years going down below 1%. Um, we need now a process of normalization. Is that a process they can actually control, do you think? Um, they can control it to, to, to some extent. Uh, I'm fairly confident for, let's say, the next 6 or, or 12 months in the sense that, at least in the case of the ECB, in the case of Europe, uh, they have a good story to tell. Uh, they can remain extremely accommodative because actually I would certainly venture that the state of the economy warrants uh, such a, a hyper-accommodative stance. It's harder to uh, uh, justify in the, in the American case. Uh, okay, all right. Um, the, um, the other issue you raised was this gap between financial assets and the state of the real economy. If we look at what's happened to uh, equity prices, which is our third chart, uh, we've seen a consistently strong rally over the past few years. Uh, is that been in line with economic fundamentals? Uh, not necessarily. It's been in line with the fact that we work with uh, our central banks, which are seen as uh, effectively injecting uh, an ever-increasing amount of liquidity in the system. I think it's still the main driver of this, of this uh, 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 impressive uh, move on the, on the equity market. But uh, if you look at the situation in Europe in particular, we are in a situation where um, the ECB and fiscal policy and everyone basically has managed to bring growth roughly in line with where potential growth is, but we still have not dealt with the negative output gap, the output loss that, that we, we have accumulated the for crisis. the last few years. So from that point of view, we are not, the, the market and the fundamentals are not completely connected. And that risks therefore a correction to bring fundamentals back in line with prices? Well, you have two solutions. Either uh, the market has to correct to, and to, to, to converge uh, towards uh, a, fun, a fundamental situation that remains challenging, or um, the macroeconomic situation starts to improve, which means that the central bank can start removing the crutches without triggering a, a nasty moment in, in the market. This is precisely what central banks are trying to do. And a final challenge, of course, is the big divergence we have now between the Europe and the US. Do you think that's manageable? I, I think the ECB uh, can manage it fairly well, uh, at least uh, for, for the next year or so, in the sense that um, we've had at least one episode, it was in 2004-2005, when the Fed started normalizing at a fairly aggressive pace actually at the time, when the ECB refused to follow suit. And if you look at how the market reacted at the time, the bond market in Europe believed the ECB, followed the ECB, uh, and the contagion from the US was, was contained. So we have at least one episode when it worked, and again it depends on the narrative, it depends on the capacity the central bank has in Europe, 
to justify its stance. And again, given the situation of inflation, the situation of growth, they can justify the stance. Gilles, thank you very much. So a lot of hard work then still for central bankers in getting that adjustment back, uh, taking into account transatlantic differences and learning from history.